G'day everyone. Day 10. Deluxe 9 volt battery tester. So this project started off as a joke. Um, here at work someone was suggesting that I should make a 9 volt battery topper that was a tester for 9 volts and simply had a 7 segment display that would light up with a 9 um, based on the voltage drop of you know the appropriate number of LEDs in series. Now you can't do that unfortunately because the displays are generally wired as common anode or common cathode displays but uh, the idea tickled my fancy and I thought I could do a little bit better than that and I could light up an actual seven segment display with a digit, I mean ideally all the digits from you know whatever the minimum voltage is to drive whatever color it would be up to nine but uh, the decode logic for uh, driving a seven segment display is, is obviously a little bit more complicated than I would like to have done all in discrete logic. The uh, and the easiest way obviously to do this is just use a microcontroller or something smarter than doing it discrete but I took upon the challenge of doing it discrete so I made voltage detectors super primitive um, they're just a zener diode with some resistors that I, I trimmed to set the point of, of operation it turns on a PMP when the voltage exceeds it it's relatively sharp it's not exactly precise but if you trim this resistor I actually just selected him to the nearest um, you know, common value that uh, E12 value that was near the voltage that I was interested in, and I got pretty close, as I'll show you in a minute. So the decode logic is pretty simple. Um, the A, B, and C segment should be on for all voltages above seven. The F and G segment should be on for all voltages above eight, and the D and E segment should be on for all voltages above eight, but not on for voltages above nine. So that's pretty easy to do in, in some analog electronics. So I made three voltage detectors, one for greater than seven or greater volts, eight or greater volts, and nine or greater volts. And then I ran them through the decode tree, which looks a bit like this. Um, I probably could have done the logic here a little bit better. Um, but in any case, I probably should have done as all together the seven or eight volt and used that negated to turn off um, D and E. But alas, I did not do it that way. And this is the way it's currently implemented. Okay, so let's look at the practical circuit. Still on a solderless breadboard. I will actually probably build this one onto a more permanent form um, because it's such a gag and it's actually useful. Um, so here is my LED tester, which is yet another 9 volt battery topper. Uh, it's just a bunch of resistors that set you know currents for a average kind of LED voltage drop of around 2.5 volts to 50, 20, 20 and I use the 20s together so I can brightness match or color match LEDs and then you know 10, 5, 2 and 1 milliamp it's uh, it's useful you know and it also if you're lazy or, or you have a LED that isn't really marked very well you can just shove it in there and turn it around until you get it in the right polarity um, again trivial project not really worth talking about but I made this a long time ago and I've used it on a regular basis I just leave it here on the bench with a 9 volt battery on it okay so this I put the new battery in recently and it should be pretty darn char pretty darn alive okay so yep sure enough 9.7 volts that's actually a very fresh 9 volt battery as you can see our display says 9 okay so Here's another random battery that's been sitting on the bench. Uh, I've been using it for everything. It's probably a bit depleted. 8.6 volts, so it isn't greater than 9, so it's saying 8. Fair enough. And we're going to get in the progressively more dead region. So as you can see, it's barely lighting up 7 for this 7.0... 7, yeah, just a little bit below 7, so it's right on the threshold of turning on the 7. And we have uh, some profoundly dead batteries here that I actually had to hook two of them up to get enough voltage to even turn it on at all. I, I figure if it's below 7 volts for a 9 volt battery, it's probably pretty sick and you shouldn't use it. So the, the top three digits worked out to be actually pretty pretty useful in terms of what's a usable battery versus an excellent battery. Okay, so we'll start off. I'll do that again. We'll let, let the battery recover for a second. So it starts off at 9 and then rapidly goes through 8 and drops down to 7. So two batteries here in series delivering 7.3 volts. So they're, they're pretty much had it. Okay, let's try it on the power supply and crank up the voltage slowly. Oops. 
volts. Okay, so here we're at 6.2 volts and it's 6.9 volts and it's just starting to turn on the 7. So let's go up a little bit. And there you can see the transition to 8 is just starting there around 7.9 volts and it's transitioned to 8 pretty com much completely at 8.1 volts and then we'll dial it up a bit more and the transition to 9 is much more abrupt it's right around 9, it's almost exactly I just lucked out that the resistor values that I picked for tuning the uh, the Zenus with the point was pretty close to being spot on. Okay, so really simple project, kind of stupid, but uh, also, yeah, pretty humorous. And I, I think I will burn it, build it into a more permanent form because it will actually be useful. Alrighty, um, I'll just zoom in so you can have a look at my ugly construction here. But yeah, that's a nice simple one here for, for day 10. Um, please uh, keep the questions and anything else, uh, any ideas you'd like me to work on uh, in the comment section and I'll have a look at them. Um, I've got a whiteboard full of ideas now. Unfortunately many of them are more than one day, they're somewhat non-trivial, but there's a few bits and pieces that could maybe be done um, as individual projects that would work towards one larger project, so we might start doing that. Okay. Um, until then, bye.